Hey guys, this is Patrick from STH. If I were to tell you that WD was doing something kind of crazy again with their WD red line, you might just say, wait a sec, Patrick, I heard this from you before. In fact, I heard this when you did the whole SMR thing over a year ago, but this is something completely different. In fact, let's talk about the WD red pro drives, which is really kind of the high end of the WD red line. Now these WD red pro drives that are supposed to be like the high end models in the WD red line for NASA's up to 24 drives, they actually have endurance ratings now or workload ratings that are so low that they can rival and sometimes not even come close to being as good as relatively low capacity consumer QLC SSDs. And that is precisely the topic of today's video. Now, of course, I think that a lot of folks are going to have a reaction to this one. So if you do and you have thoughts, well, why don't you go put that down in the comments below? I'd love to hear what you think. But taking a step back, let's talk about what's going on here. So this week, WD launched the WD Red Pro drives and specifically the 20 terabyte models, the new giant models. It's just absolutely it seems really cool. I don't know. We don't have them yet, but we will pretty soon. And Cliff actually did a piece on the WD Red Pro 20 terabyte drive. And when he did that, he actually highlighted the fact that even though it's a 20 terabyte drive, the workload rating on it is only 300 terabytes. Now, the endurance of hard drives is something that we have definitely been touching on for, I guess, years on the STH main site. But at the same time, I th think this one really kind of felt kind of shocking just because it's a 20 terabyte drive with a 300 terabyte workload rating per year. And it just kind of feels like I mean, that's only 15, that's only a 15x difference, right? But the key here is that that workload rating that WD has is not the same as what you would see on an SSD. In fact, it's not even remotely close to being the same. On a consumer SSD, you might see a typical spec, you know, maybe you have like a one terabyte M.2 SSD. And typically, you know, might see maybe like a 300 terabytes written to a 900 terabytes written. And so you might look at the workload rating of 300 terabytes per year on the 20 terabyte Red Pro and you say, hey, look, that's awesome. That's as much, if not more than the total over a couple of years that I would get on a consumer M.2 SSD. So of course the hard drive is better, right? Well, the answer to that is most likely no, and they're not even remotely close. Now I'm specifically talking about one terabyte models here because if you go up to like two terabytes and larger SSDs, especially in the data center, you see much larger SSDs than that, you typically see that with more NAND, you have more NAND that could potentially wear out or I guess distribute the load. So as you have to like program program cells and you start wearing out the cells, you know, having a larger pool of NAND memory or NAND flash on a SSD actually means that, you know, your endurance ratings tend to go up. And so you tend to see on SSDs that the larger the drives get, the larger or higher the endurance ratings get. But on the WD Red Pro line, all of the WD Red Pros from two terabytes up to 20 terabytes, which spans, you know, a 10x delta, they're all 300 terabytes per year. But let's dig into the WD Red line and kind of really make sure that we're talking about all talking about the exact same line of drives, because I think WD might actually be doing something with their Red line that we really haven't covered before. So I think we, this is a good opportunity to talk about that and just kind of talk about where the Red Pro fits in. Now, the first thing, let's talk about the WD Red drives. Now, just the plain old Red drives are the ones that we talked about in 2020 when we found that WD surreptitiously switched the drive line from using traditional CMR technologies to SMR technology. Now we have an entire video and a couple of videos on that and main site articles that got shared all over the place. And so if you wanna learn more about what SMR is, go do that. But the key thing there is just the fact that we found that when you use SMR, especially with things like ZFS, you got such poor performance, especially on like RAID rebuilds and stuff like that, that it almost made them worthless for NAS drives, even though they're marketed as being NAS drives. So as STH kind of did the testing and actually figured out that those were really not great, a number of other sites also, you know, did some work around it. And eventually WD said, hey, okay, let's go have a red plus drive. So we're gonna have the WD red, which we're gonna call that our SMR drive. And then we'll have the red plus CMR. And then we'll have the higher RPM. So instead of like 54 RPM, we'll go up to 7,200 RPM. And those higher end drives, higher performance drives will be the WD Red Pro drives. Now the WD Red Plus drives, those have actually been kind of stuck at about 14 terabytes. We really haven't seen a 16, 18 or now 20 terabyte version of those. So that mid range of the WD Red line just hasn't really moved at all. And when we go down to the WD Red, just the Red Red drives, not uh, any of the Plus or Pros, what you actually see is that we used to see drives that were like up to 14 terabytes, but if you go to WD right now, you're only gonna see up to like six terabytes. So they seem to be like kind of focused on lower capacity drives. And I don't really know why. And not only on the WD plus side, have we not necessarily seen capacities go up, but we also see that the drives are now on clearance on WD.com. 
And so that kind of makes you wonder if that was just a line to just appease folks or if that really is going to be a continuing project from Western Digital. And just capping things off again, the WD Pro that we're talking about today, that's really the line that's designed for like 24 bay NASes, where in theory you have, I guess, a little bit more vibration and heat and stuff than you do in some of the smaller units that have like two or four drives. And so the idea is that you get more performance. And so those are higher end drives and they're also priced at a higher level. And just overall, what it kind of feels like, at least to me, is just the idea that WD Red Pro feels like it's the one that WD is really putting a lot of focus on. And when you look at it and you kind of look at the 20 terabyte model, you notice that it's very similar to like the HC 560, which is a data center drive, and also the WD Gold drive. And so you're just kind of looking at those other drives and you're like, hmm, they have things like Optinan technology, they're using, you know, some of the EPMR and like all that kind of stuff. So there's a lot of, I guess, shared platform stuff. And that makes sense to me at least, because hard drive manufacturing is a huge volume game. I mean, the reason that there are only a very small number of hard drive manufacturers these days is that basically the hard drive manufacturers figured out that if they could pump volumes on hard drives, you basically get much lower costs. And that lower cost makes you more competitive in the market because people are only willing to pay a certain amount for a certain capacity. So it almost feels like WD is really focused on this like kind of 20 terabyte model and bring that out across the range. And it makes me a little bit nervous, like, hey, do they even see value in these lower capacity drives anymore? So now let's kind of pivot and let's really talk about what that implication is, I guess, for workload ratings, because this is something that's been around for a while, but nobody really focuses on it. So I think it's worth looking at here. Specifically, the WD Redline had a 180 terabyte a year workload rating. When we went to the WD Red Plus, we also saw a 180 terabyte per year rating. And the WD Red Pro drives that are 20 terabytes, even down to two terabytes, they all have a three 100 terabyte a year rating for five years for the warranty as so it gives you about 1.5 petabytes total but you see that that one year rating is really that 300 terabyte thing so you might see that 300 terabytes and say hey that's about the same as a consumer ssd but oh no it's not even close so i'm going to read this one but per western digital the workload rate is defined as the amount of user data transferred to or from the hard drive. And it's an annualized figure and it can vary depending on your hardware and software components and configurations. Now there are a couple of points here that I really wanna make. First, whenever WD discusses a workload rate, it's always accompanied by an up to, which basically means that that you would think of as a maximum number. In contrast, if you look at SSDs, well SSDs tend to use a worst case. They tend to be rated on a 4K random write workload and really random writes are the things that will burn out your cells because you have to go and reconfigure yourselves. Having the random writes means that you're doing a lot of kind of extra, you have a lot of write amplification usually in drives. And so that's the reason that the 4K random write is usually used for SSDs because it's like the worst case scenario. And what that practically means is that if you actually are doing things like writing sequential, like if you write a video to a SSD, that's not gonna be a 4K random write. It's actually something that will not use that much endurance rating on most modern SSDs. So you'd actually get, if you had like a 300 terabyte endurance rating drive on that 4K random writes, you'd actually get a lot more than 300 terabytes if you're just writing video files to it all the time. The other thing though, is the fact that those SSD endurance ratings are of course only on those random writes. They're not talking about reads because you don't have to go through those program erase cycles when you do reads on an SSD. And because you don't have to go through that, you're not really wearing out the SSD. And so if you had a workload that was like 1% writes and 99% reads, well, a consumer SSD would last like basically forever, especially if those like 1% writes were like sequential writes. I mean, that, that SSD, would be able to transfer like just an almost, you can think of it almost as like an unlimited amount of data or at minimum on a workload like that, you'd have many petabytes of data that you could transfer to and from the drive if you had that kind of workload. And it, again, contrasting that to what WD is doing here, WD is basically saying all data that goes in and out of a drive. So if that's 300 terabytes per year and on a five year warranty drive, that would give us about 1.5 petabytes total. And that might seem like a lot, but on a 20 terabyte drive, I guess the question is, well, is it really a lot? Now, comparing it to some of the stable mates that are basically built on the exact same platform, the HC 560 and also the WD Gold 20 terabyte drives, you see that both of those have up to 550 terabytes per year of workload rating. So the WD Red Pro is a little bit more, but it's kind of close to about half-ish of what the other drives in WD Stable have. But I guess the question is like, 
like, is 300 terabytes a year a lot? And I think we have to, we can answer that by kind of going through a couple of things. So first off, let's just take the internal transfer rate of about 260 megabytes per second. And let's just say that, you know, you had that, that rate and you could sustain somehow that rate. Now, of course you really can't because most likely you're not doing sequential reads and writes. And also you probably are gonna be filling the drive. So you're not always gonna be on that very kind of edge or end of the drive. You're probably gonna be doing things in the middle of the drive or towards the inner tracks of the drive where you're a lot slower. But let's just say for this, just kind of making things easy, let's just say that you're totally towards the edge of the drive and you know, you get the maximum performance. So using that case, it would take something like a day to go through about 20 terabytes of data transfer for that drive. And so taking another step, that would basically mean that it would take us roughly two weeks to go through all 300 terabytes. If we were doing again at that insane levels of speed, you'd take about two weeks to kind of run through the entire year's worth of data transfer on and off that drive. And so putting that into context, just based on like, you know, days and stuff like that. If it took you say 14 days to kind of do all that and you have 365 days in a year, that gives you about 3.8% as your total annual workload. So you can load that thing up to maximum performance for up to about 3.8% of the year. But you might say, hey, there's no way that you're gonna write and read like, you know, up to 20 terabytes every three and a half weeks or so. Like that doesn't make any sense because we only have so many users and stuff like that. But you know, clients can also be not just users, but they could also be things like virtual machines and, and programs and stuff like that. So there are a lot of things that can actually generate both reads and writes onto a NAS, especially when you get to something that's like a half a petabyte in size. But there are things that go well beyond just what you would have clients, whether those are you know servers or just kind of people or whatever, whatever kind of clients that you have of that NAS, there are things that go on in a NAS that are going well beyond what's data transferred out over the NICs. Specifically, a really good example of that is, let's say that you have RAID. Well, if you have RAID or you have some kind of mirroring, you're most likely have some right amplification factor. And what that practically means is that if you say, hey, here's 10 terabytes across the entire drives or all of the drives that are in that NAS unit, you most likely have, you know, if you're mirrored, you may have 20 terabytes instead of just 10 that you're actually writing to the disks. And if you have something like a parity RAID, like if you have like RAID 6 or RAID 5 or something like that, you most likely have some situation where you do also have some kind of write amplification as well. And there are other features as well. And a really good example of that is, let's say that you go and you do like a ZFS scrub or you do some other kind of data integrity checking feature and you just kind of say like, hey, let's go read data, make sure that it's still you know correct on the disks. And that's kind of what we want to go do just to make sure that we're not losing any data due to bit rot or anything like that. And if you were to go and do those kind of things, well, those are actually going and reading data from drives, potentially writing things. And those are not things, those are not requests that are going to clients or users or anything like that. Those are requests that are really just happening on the NAS itself. Likewise, rebuilding RAID arrays is another one where you just generate tons of reads and writes in a array. And those you're not really initiating from clients. You're not initiating from virtual machine hosts or anything like that. It's just all happening on the NAS. And at the same time, given the current uncorrected bit error rates that you have on the drives, well, it gets to the point now where we have such large drives, the Uber, they're actually, that's actually kind of not very high, especially compared to what we see in modern data center SSDs. And so basically you get to the point where you do actually have to care about data integrity. So doing things like scrubbing rays and what have you is important because you actually have to worry about now is all of the data that you're writing to a drive actually being written correctly or is there a potential for error? And now there's actually a pretty high likelihood that if you do do an entire drive write, you may have an error on that drive. So this whole data integrity checking thing is actually a big deal. Now, of course, let's just be clear on this one that you know being able to use the NAS basically at its like 100% peak performance for about 3.8% of the year, that's really never gonna happen because you're gonna have things like small file writes or reads. You're also gonna have, you know, writing at different parts of the drives and all that kind of stuff. So there are definitely, you're just not gonna get that much performance out of the drives where that will really be the right number. But at the same time, this is an up to 300 terabyte rating. And it just to me, it feels like that 300 terabyte rating just kind of feels a little bit low. I mean, you know, these are not two terabyte drives. These are 20 terabyte drives. And yet they have the exact same workload rate. And while I understand the need to differentiate from Western Digital's perspective, at the other time, what really makes me worried about this is by putting that number out there and saying like, hey, you can use this one up to 300 terabytes a year. And then saying on the gold and on the HC 560 platforms that you could have up to 550 terabytes per year. I mean, what happens when you are made a drive, it's a 330 terabyte a year drive failed and you're just 
you know, dumping a whole bunch of stuff on that or whatever. And then you have a drive fail, it goes back at 330 terabytes. Well, now you're out of the rated spec. And so what, what, what could happen? I mean, you could literally have Western Digital could say, hey, you know, spec sheet says it's only 300 terabytes. You did 330 terabytes. You should have used a gold or a HC 560. And you're sitting there like, wait a sec, we, we had under 5% utilization on our drive. Like, what the heck is going on here? Still, I would love to get your feedback on this. I mean, at this point, the large capacity hard drives from Western Digital have workload ratings that really rival in many ways, kind of like low end consumer QLC SSDs. And that's, I don't, I don't know if that's right for a, you know, 20 terabyte premium of like the NAS premium drive, like Red Pro drive. Like, I don't know if that's right. And so I just don't know how I feel about it. I mean, we actually deployed almost a petabyte of, HC, I think 550 drives over the last quarter or so. So we've definitely been installing a lot of WD drives, but at the same time, I mean, things like this in the WD Redline, like, man, I just wish that that Western Digital said, hey, we're gonna take the WD Redline and we're gonna be exemplary. We're gonna be like really good on it. And then you see things like the two terabyte and 20 terabyte drives both have 300 terabyte a year ratings. And you're just like, come on now. Still, I guess since the premium NAS hard drive segment with reds and then the premium of the premium hard drive segment, NAS hard drive segment in that red pro, what that's really teaching us is that it's definitely time to stop thinking about them as being more or having higher endurance than QLC SSDs, especially in these read intensive workloads like NAS units. Realistically, they are lower endurance. And so that's my thought for today. And if you like this video, well, give it a like, click subscribe, turn on notifications so you can see when we come out with great new videos. As always, thanks for watching. Have an awesome day.